One of the strongest Gulf Coast connections to the John F. Kennedy assassination lies deep in the lesser known history of New Orleans. Here's our Shelby Myers to connect the dots. The birthplace of an assassin and the city where the only trial for JFK's murder was held is New Orleans also home to a diabolical plot to kill the nation's 35th president. New Orleans, a city rich in culture, cuisine, and conspiracy. It's a question that's been asked for over 50 years from the bayous to Bourbon Street because the accused assassin was a native son. I think it's an unfortunate connection to New Orleans. Lee Harvey Oswald was born in New Orleans in 1939. After a stint in the Marine Corps and defection to Russia, Oswald came home. He lived on Magazine Street in the corner of a building that now houses a law firm. He was described early on and especially by his Marine Corps drill instructors as being something of a loner. And so uh, he didn't really have a, a place that he could say was his own in New Orleans. But according to biographers, Oswald wanted to be famous and remembered throughout history. Oswald was in and out of New Orleans as a pro Castro sympathizer that handed out propaganda uh, in favor of Cuba and the USSR, but he also infiltrated an anti Castro group as a spy uh, in New Orleans on Canal Street, the busiest street in New Orleans. Oswald was seen multiple times handing out fair play for Cuba leaflets. Did a building link Oswald to a conspiracy stamped on the bottom of those pamphlets? He was passing out an address 544 Camp Street right here, the old site of the Newman building. But what's interesting about that address, FBI agent Guy Bannister had his office at the same building under a different address. New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison found the possible connection between Oswald and Bannister intriguing. In 1967, Garrison opened his own investigation and kept it secret from the public. He first zeroed in on a strange figure named David Ferry. He definitely had uh, connections to mafia and he was known to fly uh, drugs and drug runners over the over the border into Central America. So this is a person that was certainly a concern, but whether he was part of the plan, a Castro led plan even to assassinate the president is something that will that went with him to the grave. I, I don't think that we'll know. Ferry died of a brain aneurysm not long after he was interviewed by Garrison. The DA then turned his attention to the man who would ultimately stand trial, Clay Shaw. Shaw lived in this Creole cottage in New Orleans. He founded the International Trade Mart on Canal Street. The old building was destroyed, but this one still stands today. There's a lot of backstory that goes into this. Garrison was actually reprimanded by Clay Shaw at Brennan's one time because Garrison had gotten drunk and was slapping his wife around in the restaurant and Clay Shaw intervened. And so he later, when reading the Warren Commission report, saw that there was a person named Clay Bertrand and he said, oh, Clay. Clay. It must be Clay Shaw. It was here 50 years ago at the Orleans Parish Criminal District Court. Clay Shaw was the only person to go on trial for the assassination of John F. Kennedy. District Attorney Jim Garrison alleged he, along with Lee Harvey Oswald and David Ferry, plotted to kill the president. He wasn't guilty of these crimes and a jury said so after only 50 minutes of deliberation in a six week circus like trial. Garrison had attributed a motive of homosexual thrill killing um, to uh, Clay Shaw. And so all of that combined, he ended up dying broke and without very many friends. And that's something that usually gets lost in this whole story. We think about what was Garrison like? Was it true what he did? He ruined a man's life for no reason um, and he was wrong about him. Shaw died of lung cancer a few years after his not guilty verdict. This is Jim the Giant Garrison. Mm -hmm. John Fitzmorris Jr. is a retired attorney who worked under Garrison a few years after the Shaw trial. He says there really was division within the district attorney's office over it. So you think it was a wild goose chase to put Clay Shaw on trial for? I think so, yes. There were a lot of people I still run into that say he had something. He really had something. Now I've read and this is all secondhand. I have read everything there was to read about that assassination. 
and he wasn't on to anything. I, I don't know where he was going with that. Garrison would lose his job at the DA's office, but didn't ruin his career. He served out the rest of it as a judge in the 4th District. Whether it's in the stories tour guides share with visitors on Canal Street or in the comment section of various YouTube videos, people still talk of conspiracy. A plot carried out in Dallas that was birthed in New Orleans. The best part about a conspiracy theory is no one is ever going to agree on it, so you'll always keep talking about it. Garrison passed away in 1992 of cancer. While working on this story, I reached out to his five children for an interview, but they never responded.